Hey guys, Forge was finally released for Minecraft 1.17.1, and hopefully the wait was worth it. In this video, I'm going to cover some mods that you can play with right now if you're using Forge. There's quite a few mods available, and I'm going to be looking at some of the most popular choices. Therefore, I'll be covering some mods I've talked about in previous videos, but I'm looking at some fresh stuff too. Starting with one of my favorite biome mods, Biomes Oplenty has been made available. With it installed, you'll find tons of new biomes spawning in your world, transforming both the overworld and nether with them also featuring some new terrain. You'll find the likes of Alps, Cherry Blossom Groves, Outbacks, and more. The XP Tome is a new item which can be crafted from a regular book and four ender pearls. It can be used to store and retrieve experience, and it can hold about 30 levels worth in total, although this can be configured. It's a useful way of keeping your experience safe so that you don't lose it if you die. With the Gravestone mod, you can also keep all of your items safe if you die. When you die, a Gravestone will be placed at your death location, and you'll receive an obituary giving the coordinates of the grave and showing all of the items that was stored inside. When you find and break the grave, all of the items will be removed and returned to your inventory, so that they no longer have a despawn timer either. The Lightning Wand is a tool which can be crafted from two blaze rods and a block of glowstone. When you right-click while holding the wand, you'll throw out an invisible light source, and it'll stick where it lands, which should just look a little neater than placing tons of torches. You can destroy the light sources by punching them with the wand in your hand, and the durability can be repaired by combining the wand with glowstone dust. The Hunter Illager is a new hostile mob which you'll occasionally stumble across in your world. They spawn inside huts, which you can often find inside of the plains biome, with the hunter wandering around them. As soon as they spot you, they'll attack and eat food when they get injured. If you kill them, they'll drop food and bows mostly. You can search the hut to find some chests filled with loot. The mod also adds the boomerang, which you might find in huts, or you can craft it instead, and it's a new throwable weapon. Scannable allows you to search for different things in your world, and to get started, you'll need to craft the scanner. By sneaking and right-clicking while holding it, you can open the interface and add different modules, which represent the items you're scanning for. It could be ores, monsters, fluids, and more. With the scanner in your hand, you can now use it to scan your world with small tooltips showing you the location of what you're looking for. Cosmetic Armor Reworked adds some extra slots to your inventory where you can equip armor, meaning you can now wear two sets at once. It means you can wear one set of armor for their stats, but the other will be set for cosmetics, like being able to have stats of netherite armor even though it looks like you're wearing iron. Easy Villagers allows you to pick up villagers and place them into your inventory, which you can do while sneaking. They'll need to be placed into different blocks, like the trader block, which can secure villagers without them moving. You can also find breeder, farmer, and iron farm blocks which can be used to grow crops, create baby villagers, and kill iron golems. It's a pretty useful mod for managing villages overall. Packing tape is useful for transporting blocks, and it can be crafted from paper, string, and slime balls, and you'll need additional paper for the packing process. Hold the tape and use it on blocks like chests to turn them into packaged blocks. You can then break them to transport them and interact with them again to remove the packaging tape, while keeping all the items inside. Chunk Loaders adds four different chunk loaders, with them each having their own recipes which are relatively expensive to craft. The lowest tier will keep one chunk loaded, and the highest will keep a 7x7 area of chunks loaded. You can place down the chunk loaders and they'll be animated blocks. If you right-click them, then a map will appear and you can choose which chunks you want to load and unload. Tree Harvester will allow you to bring down entire trees by breaking the bottom log, which you need to do by sneaking. If you aren't sneaking, then the logs will break like normal, and it should also work with modded trees. You'll notice that the leaves also fall faster, and when the tree is removed, a sapling will be replanted automatically. Another small mod is Villager Names, which should add a bit more life to your world. 
Every villager in your world will be given a random name from a list of over 5,000, although you can also define your own. The Bag of Yurting is an interesting mod. When you right-click on a block, it will store the surrounding area inside the bag. And there are a few different sizes to the bag, with the highest being able to store a 13 by 13 block area. When you right-click again, the area will be placed down again, allowing you to carry around a small house if you wanted to. Block states are also saved, so that chests, furnaces, and other blocks will stay as they are. With Village Spawn Point, you'll spawn in a village as soon as you create a new world. It's a small mod I talked about in my RPG video, and I think it makes the early game a little bit easier. Waddles adds life to some of the colder biomes in your world, as you'll now find penguins spawning in them. They can't be tamed or interacted with, they just make the area feel a little more immersive, but they do have their own sounds and animations. Speed building changes the properties of both ladders and rails, so they act more like scaffolding. You can hold either of these items in your hand and right-click on an already existing rail or ladder to make it add to the end piece, which should make placement a lot faster. Packed up, add some backpacks which sit in your inventory, with there being seven different types available. You can start by crafting the regular backpack which gives 27 slots and can be crafted from five leather, a chest, string, and two sticks. You can then slowly work your way up to crafting the obsidian backpack, which gives 72 slots instead. You can hold the backpack and right-click them to open them up, or just press the O key instead. Simply Light adds lots of new lights to Minecraft, which should look great in your builds. My favorites are the dynamic edge lights, which can wrap around the top or bottom of blocks nicely, but you can also find light fixtures, rods, panels, and slabs. The lights in this mod can only be white. Mine Menu is also now available for the latest version, adding some features which should save lots of time. Inside the menu, you can assign functions like key bindings, so you don't have to memorize them all, or even save commands so that you can quickly switch between the times or do different teleports. Eyes in the Darkness is a small mod which adds a horror element to Minecraft. Occasionally you'll find eyes that blink and stare at you while also playing some creepy sounds. If you get too close, then you might just get a small jump scare. With Let Sleeping Dogs Lie, some new animations are added to wolves. Instead of your pet sitting around waiting for you to return, they'll lie down instead, with a few different poses included with the mod. They'll return to their sitting position once you're nearby again. That's all of the mods I've got to cover. We're bound to see more mods being updated over the next few days and weeks for Forge, and I'll be covering my weekly mods list again soon, now that Forge and Fabric are both on the same version.